Hello, teacher Alexis. Hello, Wei. How are you? Welcome to the class. How do you feel? Yeah, I'm really fine. How about you? Very good. Thanks for asking. I'm so happy to see you one more time. Well, actually, I cannot see you very well, but so how? I think my I think my camera has some problem. Oh, I understand. No problem. So we welcome to the class one more time. So happy to see you once again, and yeah. Merry Christmas to you. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Okay, so let's get started with our class. So we can you tell me what did you and I talk about in our previous class? Yeah, in our previous class we talked about some big mystery. Uh, uh, in particular is uh the crime at the at the manor. First, we are uh, we yeah we describe the room and then we learn about compound nouns, and then we analyzing what is a uh, burglary and finally finally we uh learn to realize uh, what is picturing and what is imagining. That is correct. So that's right. In addition to this, I think I gave you a homework. Uh, am I correct? Yeah, uh, and I have sent you. Oh yeah, fantastic. So let me share my screen to you. So this way we can right start with uh, with the homework. Uh, do let me know if you can see well. Okay. Can you see my screen? Uh, I, I can't see. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, I can see it now. Amazing, so let's see. So then I, I'll give you this exercise. So let me see what, to, what we do here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So actually, it was so simple. It was only to complete um, the exercises, right? Using yeah, the yeah. compound nouns, right? So I it before, and then complete them with a correct word. So now we're going to practice with this, right? So okay. here we go. Please put that. Can you remember uh, we? Uh, okay, okay. It's it has some broken broken up. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna just we're just going to. All right. Complete it. Come here. Okay. 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 Uh, I I will read the example first. Please please put that crepes packet in the dustbin, not on the the flower bed. Wow. Okay. It, it's quite so small. Oh yeah, it's tiny, yeah. So can you see it well? Do you want me to zoom? Oh, okay, I, I have my own uh, picture. Okay, okay, number one, number yeah. one is his girlfriend yes. gave, okay, his girlfriend gave him a painting brush as a birthday present. Okay. Okay, next so, is no. out. Our sport teacher is playing basketball at the history center next weekend. Right. Number three. three. My next door, My next neighborhood, door. Neighborhood, yeah, my next door, door neighbor sits in his bed, his bedroom playing computer games all day. Okay, number four. Can you go to the convenience store and buy some strawberry jam and some tea bags, please? Okay. Number five, Number at five. this hotel, every room has an alarm clock on the bedside table and a TV screen in the bathroom. Okay. Number six. Number six, the lamp light in the living room needs a new bulb. New bulb. All right, that is correct. Perfect. Great job with it. Congrats. And thank you so much. So I think we can okay. start with the lesson. Give me a second. Okay. 
Okay. Can you see my screen? Okay, I can see it now. Okay, so we covered this part last class, right? Lesson 4D. Uh, okay, I, I think this one. Was the first one with the one we covered? Yeah, we, we've done the crime at the manor. Oh, okay, okay, no problem, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I have another student that covers pretty much the same material, the same book as you. That's why I'm kind of like, oh, is that the one that we is using or is that the one Yan is using? Okay. So let's continue here. So before we con before I continue with this, let me just introduce you to this learn this box, all right? And then we continue with the lesson. It was the last part I think I did not cover. I did not manage to cover in our previous lesson. Let's talk about homophones, all right? Okay. It's not a secret that homophones are words that they tend to be easily confused by people, especially yeah. many English learners because of the similarities there are in this kind of words and this yeah. vocabulary, all right? But here, yeah. let's see what is a homophone. A homophone has the same pronunciation as another word, but a different spelling and meaning. So, for example, we have the case for example, now. Yeah. Uh, we have there and there, R, C, okay. and C. And when you pronounce the words, you can say, oh, okay, that's similar. But in fact, you're different, all right? Yeah. So, look at there. So I want you to read, I want you to check again the exercise number one. I will, I'm in this part and learn, learn this box. All right, so uh, let's okay. see this. Then I want you to find the homophones of these words in, uh, in the point 6.1 or maybe 6.2, which is yeah. this one, look at there. So we didn't do this exercise, I think. So anyway, I think we did not cover this one, right? I did. Yeah, yeah. We did it, right? Mm, yeah, we did uh, six, six as one. As a homework, one. right? We did it as a yeah. homework. Yeah, yeah. Okay, perfect. And what about this one? No, we didn't cover this one, right? Yeah, no. Okay, let's do this one first and then we we'll continue with the other. Because that's okay. very important, all right? So here we're gonna make three compounds dance for each of these words. And after that, we, we are going to use a dictionary to help you. You have a dictionary for you. I mean, you can use an online dictionary. If you are using your computer right now, you can go ahead and look for an online dictionary. And simultaneously, we are also going to look for the meaning of that. Okay. Once you have the compound words, of course. So let's see here. So the first one is gonna be sun. We have sunlight, sunbeam, sunburn, uh, <laughs> sunscreen. Uh, oh, what do we have? Uh, yeah. um, Uh, do, do, do we have sun hat? Uh, sun hat? Sun, sun hat. hat. The thing we uh, wear it on our hat. Oh, you, uh, can you write it for me? I did not manage to listen your voice well. But I think it's because of the connection. Yeah, it was breaking up a little bit. But if you could write it, that'll, that'll be fine. Uh, okay. 
Yeah, ready for me, please. Oh, sun hat. Yeah, of course. Yeah, absolutely. We have sun hat. All right. Yeah, okay. So what about football? What can you get out of the word football? Uh, football player. Um, okay. And what about police? That's easy. Uh, policeman. Police office. Okay. Uh, police police office. station. Police station. I think police officer as well. And what about yeah. car? Uh, car. Any idea? I'm giving you some clues. Uh, wait. Uh, I think I just know car park. And what about car watch? Uh, what? I'm so sorry. What about car watch? Uh, watch. Yeah, car watch to you know like to watch your cars. Wow, <laughs> it's quite new to me. Oh, it's quite new. Let me write it for you just in case. Okay. Car okay. watch. That's easy. Ah, uh, okay. Car watch. Okay. What about um? Let me see water. What do you have for me when it comes to water? Water, water bottle, water bottle. Water bottle, okay, uh, another one. Uh, can we say watermelon? Watermelon, of course, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, it's a compounding, you know, it's a compounding. So okay. book? Uh, book, bookshelf, bookmark. Oh, uh, bookmark, bookshelf, uh, also bootleg. Yeah. <laughs> so there are many things. Yeah. Okay. Well done, we. So now let's continue. Okay. Okay. So I already explained to you what homophones are, and let's continue now with this exercise. So I want you to find homophones of these words, as we, as you already know, in the exercise one and two. Then I'm gonna give you the the chance to do that. All right. And then let me see how you do it, all right? Okay. Uh, the first one is flower. <laughs> we have flower. Flower, uh, all right. It's a part of the plant, yeah. Yeah, we have flower. We have the number two. Uh, wick. And w then? W-E-N-K. Uh, -E all right, we have wick, that's correct. We yeah. have new or new. new. New, yeah, new. Uh, it's, uh, we have we also have new as something contrary to uh, old. And it's correct. And we have sun. Sun, we have the sun and, and the word sunlight. Yeah, that's right. That, that is correct. <laughs> okay. So now look at this. I'm going to give you the chance to do this exercise. This is the exercise number two of the last one. And in this exercise, it's going to be pretty easy. So you are just going to choose the correct option, okay? According to the context. So I know it's something that you can do it spontaneously. And I will yeah. kindly ask you to give me just one minute. I will give you the opportunity to, all right, to choose the best choices. There you have 10 options, all right? You have okay. 10, 10, um, 10 items. So you're gonna choose the correct word. While you're doing this, you organize your ideas, I'm going to give you one minute or two minutes real quick. So I'm not coming back right now. Okay. Just one second, all right? I'm here even you do not listen to me. Okay, okay, okay. You can even write it in a piece of paper if you do have it or in your notepad and choose this one.
You will hear five short conversations. You will hear each conversation. Okay, we so we can continue. So okay, we can go on. So let me see. So what is gonna be the number one? It's uh the first the first flower. The first one's flower. Number two. Yeah. Number two oh, is also the first one. Um, number three. The second one, meat. Number three, uh, the first or the second? Yes, the second. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you well. Can you hear me well? Well, sometimes I sense I'm breaking up. Let me see. I think it's a, it's a connectivity. So can you see me? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. I just see your avatar. Oh, let me see. Oh, my gosh. Give me just a second. I think the connectivity. So okay. uh, let's continue. Number four. First or second? Number four is first. Okay, number five? Number five is first two. Number six? Six and seven are also the first one. Six and seven, the first one. Yeah. All right, cool. Number eight? Uh, eight and nine is the second. Okay, and number 10? And number 10 is the first one. The first one, that is correct. Okay, thank you, We. So can you see me, Wee? Well, not, not yet. Yeah. yeah. What's up? Let me see here. What about now? Can you see me? Oh, I can't see you. I think it's a connectivity. Let me see. Okay, okay. No, I think it's not no problem. Let me see. Let me see. Okay. What about now? Can you see me? Okay, I can see you. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, so now we can start with the next lesson, all right? Here it is. Okay. So now we're gonna be covering lesson B, all right? Grammar reported speech. I think before we have already been talking about it in the, in the previous lessons, all right? So here is the test we are going to cover today in this class. Mm -hmm. So look at this. This is the Eiffel Tower, Eiffel Tower okay. holds. Okay, so then okay. we are going to analyze that this is what we're going to do. We're going to read that. That's pretty much a reading comprehension exercise. In the first uh, part of it, we are going to read the test, and then we are going to choose the correct uh, the correct option. Okay. Okay. So so that we can complete the first exercise and we proceed to the second. Okay. Let uh, me okay. just pull it up. Let me just scroll up, and how you can see this well. Let me see. Okay. Uh, Eiffel Tower. 
One day in 1925, a CH man called Victor Luxton invited six French businessmen to a meeting in Paris. Paris. Luxton, Paris. Paris. Luxton told the man that the Eiffel Tower was becoming too expensive to maintain. He said that the government had decided to sell it, and, the, and he showed them secret of official documents to prove it. He told them he couldn't tell anyone else about it. One of the businessmen, Andrew Poison, agreed to buy the tower, but his wife was suspicious. She said Lustig was telling, wasn't telling them the truth. Lustig met Poison again in, a, in private and told him he was acting strangely because he expected a bribe. So Poison said to Luxton that he would give him to a large bribe, as well as the money for the tower. In fact, Luxton was a common, common and disappeared with a, all of Poison's money. The official documents were forget forgeries and the whole story was a lie. Poison never told anybody except his wife that Luxton had tricked him. He was too embarrassed. Okay, very well. So let's see. What did Andre Poison get for, for his money? Secret documents, the Eiffel Tower, or nothing? Mm. Uh, it's nothing. Okay, that is correct. So let's continue. So okay. here we're gonna do the exercise number two. So we're gonna read the quotations below and underline the parts of the test in the exercise number one. That matched okay. it. So what I'm gonna do here so that you can, you can be able to underline it, to underline then. So I'm gonna pass to you the pencil. Let me do this. I'm gonna give you the control of my computer so you may be able to underline, okay? So okay. there it is. So now you can use uh, the pencil, and then you give the blue one, so that will be easier to distinguish. And now you can proceed. Okay. Let me see. Yeah. <laughs> Very well. Well, I can see it. Okay, finish. Okay, let me see. Now, can you mention the ones that you underline? Okay, uh, this this is the first one. The African Tower is becoming too expensive to maintain. And the next is also the second one is uh, the government had decided to sell it. Oh, sorry. The next, uh, the, th the third one is uh, you can't tell anyone else about it. Uh, okay. they, they couldn't Lovesick. tell anyone else about it, right? Uh, then we have Luxtick wasn't telling them the truth. Uh, okay. The fifth one is uh, he was acting strangely because he expected a bribe. Okay. Uh, the semi-final one is uh, he would give him a large bribe. And the final one, Lustig had tricked him. Okay, so now real quick, real quick, we, I want you to join, I want you to get together, I want you to gather, all right, all of these, all of these uh, sentences that you underline and get them an idea of the test. Uh -huh. Okay.
Do you know how to do it? Uh, Same way, pretty much as you did. The Eiffel Tower was becoming too expensive to maintain. Uh, the government had decided to sell it. Then they couldn't tell anyone else about it. So pretty much you're gonna gather them and say all at once, all right? Respecting the commas and the dots. So it's kind of like you're gonna read them, but all together, not necessarily like one by one as we did. So just to get the main idea of the test. Uh, okay, I, I understand that. Because you already have it underlined. Since you uh -huh. have an underlined, so it's just like reading all of them together now. And that'll be the main idea of this test. Okay. Uh, in, in 1925, uh, someone said that the Eiffel Tower is becoming uh, was becoming too expensive to maintain and they also said that the government had decided to sell it but uh, but they couldn't tell anyone else about it and, and a businessman and this and um in in six french businessmen who who was who was invited who were invited to the meeting uh, there, there is Andrew Poisons who agreed to buy the tower. Uh, in, uh, although his wife was really suspicious, and well, when when Luxic met Poison in private, they told him. Uh, Luxic told Poison that he was acting strangely, mm, as if he expected this for a bribe, but. Uh, and finally, Poison, Poison gave Lustig money and gave nothing. But he was too embarrassed to tell anyone that Lustig had tricked him. Amazing. So there you got the main idea. Great job. So look at that. Look at this. So now, now let's do. So did you do it? Uh, did you do it as the way I told you? Like, uh, let me see. So like, um comparing the quotations in exercise number two, like using the different tenses, like present continuous, passive. Yeah, I, I see it. You did it this way? Yeah. Amazing, yeah. Because I was not listening to you very well. So let's see. So give me a second. Okay. Here the connectivity, I don't know, today is kind of like, you know, a bit weak, which is not common because it's very powerful here. Are you able to listen to me very well today? Yeah, I listen very well, but sometimes I start breaking up as uh, I'm sitting in uh, the dining room far from the Wi Fi. Okay, okay. So look at there. So let's do exercise number four. So here, this is what we are going to do. We are going to read the point one in the, in the learn this box. So we will find examples of pronouns that are different in direct speech and reported speech in exercise number two. So let's check the learn this box. No. Okay, so when we change direct to, uh, when we change direct to reported speech, number one, the pronouns and positive adjectives often change example For example i you we they myself yourself my your etc that is correct time expressions time expressions often change uh, today tomorrow yesterday last month etc that is correct so let's see here so i want you to read the quotations below well i think was pretty much what we did yeah or similar to this all right that is yeah. pretty much what we did so but anyway i want you to read the quotations below and then only read them all right because okay. we did something similar just okay. read them the first one the eiffel tower is becoming too expensive to maintain the second the, the government has decided to sell it three you can't tell anyone else about it for 
looks like isn't telling them isn't telling us the truth. Okay. Five, I'm acting strangely because I expect a bribe. Six, I'll give you a bribe. And seven, lipstick tricked me. Okay, so let's continue. A lot of complications with the Eiffel Tower by those times. So look at this. So now that we already have this, the learn this box. So we're gonna do the exercise number five. And what is that we are gonna do here? So I think we already read that. So we are gonna match time expressions. For example, one to six, with their equivalent in reported speech. A, uh, from A to F. Okay. Uh, today with uh, one with C. Two with D. Three with uh, three with A, four with E, five with um, F, and six with B. Okay, let's do it this way. Let's do it this way. That'll be that. That'll be better. Number one today. Today, uh, with C that day. Okay, today. So this is the. Uh, let us see, right? C yeah, that yeah, day. C. Okay. Number two, tonight. Uh, with D last night. Oh no, that night. Okay. Number three, next week. Next week, uh, with uh, A, the next week or the following week. Okay. Yesterday? Yesterday with A, the day before. Okay, number five, this year. Uh, this year with uh, F, that year. Okay, number six, la last month, all right? This would be the month before. Amazing. So look at this, wait. So now I'm going to check your answers. So uh -huh. one is C, okay, as you said. Number two, D, three, A, four, E, five, F, and number six is B. So look at here. So we are going to read the direct speech and complete the reported speech with the correct tenses, pronounced and time expressions. So that's gonna be a pick the blinds exercise. So that we usually do, you know, we always do this kind of exercises. But the intention of this one is to use the logic using the okay. tenses, the pronouns, the time expression, so you can do it properly. So let's see. You re let me know once you're ready, if you need to analyze, to organize your ideas, or yeah, if you can, I can do it that way. Okay, amazing, love that. Okay, number okay, one. Uh, he said that he was doing his homework that day. <laughs> That's right. Number two, number I two, don't understand said, your question. Okay, uh, she said to me that she didn't understand my questions. Okay, very, very well, very good. We sold our car last month. He said, he said, he said that he had sold that car the previous month. Okay, so very good. So number four, I give your book, I give you your book back tomorrow. He said to her, uh, he said to her. Okay. He said to her that he would give her, give her her back, her book back the following day or the next day. Okay. Very well. Great job. <clears throat> let's continue now with the exercise number seven. So now okay. let's read the lookout, right? So here we are going to underline all the examples of say and tell in the text in exercise number one. So look at this. Okay. Okay, so look at the look up. Say and tell. Okay. We, we tell somebody we tell somebody something. For example, she told me her name, not she said me her name. 
Very good. Well done. Yeah. So say something. We say something to somebody. For to example, somebody, okay? Yeah. So we say goodbye to our cousins. Okay. okay. We say goodbye to our cousins. That's a good example. The thing is that when you tell, all right, you are saying something that already happened, all right? You can you can tell I sorry. You can tell something. You can tell something to somebody else. But when you say right, okay. you refer about something that not necessarily it's a story. It's something in general. And obviously, I do understand that many people get confused with these two terms because of the similarities there are in terms of use and application. Okay, clear with this? Okay. okay. Amazing, let's continue. So we look at that. <clears throat> Exercise number eight. So we are going to complete the sentences with say or told. Then I want you to write them, okay? In the direct speech, as a reported speech. So it's kind of like we're going to change the order of the sentences and the tenses. All right? Look at the first one just in case if you want to make sure that it's going to be fine. Look at the first one. I'm not feeling well. My sister told me that after that you get an answer. You have the following. My sister told me she wasn't feeling good. Okay, uh, number two, you've done really well. My dad told me. And change to report, reported speech is, my dad told me that I had done really well. Okay. Okay, number three, it will be great show. The singer said, mm, we, we can change to, the singer said that it will be a great show. The number four, I can't four. buy my purse. She said to her boyfriend and change to reported speech is she said to her boyfriend that she couldn't buy her purse. All right. Number five, number five. I'm going on holiday next week. My aunt, my aunt told me. My, and we change. My aunt told me that she was going on holiday the, the following week. Oh, sorry. Okay. Very, very well. Okay, so you number six. Number six. Yeah, you don't, you don't need your books today. Our teacher told us, and change is our teacher told us that we didn't need our books that, that day. Wow. Okay, uh, you you don't need your books today. Our teacher told us. Told us. Told us. Told us we didn't need our books. That, that day okay yeah. so yeah one more thing okay one more thing so i want you to think about something something uh, that somebody told you and which you didn't believe all right so yeah. my question for you it will be why did you why didn't you believe or why didn't you believe it and i would like you to tell me if possible well, um, that thing had just happened yesterday. I know, two days before. Um, when it's about midnight, yeah, at exactly midnight, when I was studying, yeah, when I was studying on my laptop, and then my mom came, my mom suddenly, like, awake. What? Awake? No. <laughs> Uh, my mom suddenly woke waking up and then she told me that um, if you if you stay up to like Krampus will go and catch will will visit visit us and catch me. And oh I God. didn't believe as I as I don't yeah, as I don't believe in like supernatural things. I don't believe that. Okay, I, supernatural things, right? So were, uh, were, uh, were you scared, at least a little bit? Mm, yeah. 
maybe a little bit as I have watched a horror film the three days before, and yeah, you know, and <laughs> uh, I can say that uh, this morning when it had, when it has when it suddenly had a power cut, well, I was quite scared. I see, I see. <laughs> that's normal because you know, uh, as a human being, that's normal, especially when we are told things like that. So we let me show you this. Here uh, we have a, a pretty much a, a test that describes what is a reported speech statement, all right? So here we're gonna be talking about reported speech statement. So I would need to know that we use reported speech to report what someone has said without using their exact words, which means you are pretty much paraphrasing or you are, or you are pretty much all right, making reference on what somebody, what somebody else have either done or said. So let's see. So when we change direct speech to reported speech, we usually change two words from to go one tense back. Look at there. So we have seen two examples. Number one, can you read it? Uh, okay, number one, Tom lives in Germany, said Claire. And then we change. Claire said that Tom lived in Germany. In 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 Germany. 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 So look at this. So as a homework. So this one, that'll be a homework. So I'm gonna give you this one as a homework. So what I want you to do is to use these different tenses, and to make exa examples. All right. I want you to send me examples of these different tenses using the direct speech and the reported speech. So there you have the past continuous, you have the present perfect, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I would like you to complete this exercise using this, this kind of examples or stereotypes, but you're gonna give them your own touch. Clear with the homework? Okay, okay. Let me just copy this for you. I'm sorry. I will send this to you on Zalo. Okay, give me a second just to make sure that you get the message. So we can you see it? Uh, me... not, not, not yet. Okay, now you're gonna receive it. So do let me know, because to me it's very important that you really you really have it on Zalo. Okay, okay. Because what's happening is that I have Zalo app installed on my, on my computer, but not in my phone. So apparently it doesn't allow me to do it in my phone, or it did not allow me to do it by the time I did. And that's why I'm doing it this way. Okay. So here's the homework. Okay. So then you make sentences with this. You see both direct speech and reported speech. So we comp and we will compare the differences, okay, between those okay. two speeches. All right. So we uh I want you to I want to ask you what did you want uh, what did you learn today in this class? Okay, today in this class I have learned about lots of things. Uh, first we talk about homophones, and then we learn about that uh, reported speech and how to turn from directed to reported speech. Uh, in tense, in pronoun, possessive, adjectives, and time expressions. And finally, we, um, we learn how to, um, how to realize the difference between say and tell in reported speech. That is correct. So those are two different things, even they have similarities in context. When you say, when you tell, all right, for the, for the next week, I want you to uh, obviously as a homework, okay, to make examples, to write examples and send it through Zalo. But also I want you to research uh, the difference between say and tell, all right? Okay. Okay, we, well, thank you so much for your attendance today, for being active in the class and see you in our next encounter. Oh, I forgot to tell you something. We, um, let me ask you something. What time okay. is there now in Vietnam? Uh, it's almost nine. 
almost nine. Would you mind to take the class one hour earlier or are you busy that schedule? Uh, well, I think the next week is where I'm gonna start the, uh, the, the scholarship. I don't, I think I told you about that before. So yeah. it's, yeah, cause I will be taking uh, a course on, uh, actually the, in the, the scholarship I got for my master's degree. So okay. it's, it's uh, like at uh, that time the well, one of the courses I got and pretty much it's kind of like, I don't have more choices because okay. I wanted to do it in, during the week, but that was the only choice I found. And if we couldn't do it, let me see, at uh, what time are we starting the class? It is in Vietnamese time. I think this uh, is- eight. It is eight, yeah. Eight. Uh, then that'll be seven, seven, seven p.m. Do, does it work for you? Oh, we can uh, learn at six, six thirty p.m. in this. Six thirty p.m. Let me see. Oh yeah, six thirty to six thirty to seven thirty, right? Yeah. Amazing. Let's do it this way. Well, wait. Okay. Thank you so much for your time i hope you have a nice rest of the day or evening it's nice. right i hope you have a good night and see you in our next class yeah see you later and merry christmas to you merry christmas by the way all the best to you family yeah see you. thank you all right